Today, we're looking at the motion graphics from Dune Part 2, and I'll give you my thoughts on how we might make something similar for free in DaVinci Resolve. Let's go. All right, so this is the end of the Dune official trailer number three. I have not seen this at all. You are not prepared for what is to come. Fancy boy. All right, let's go back. Mm hmm. That looks sick. This is a prime example of how you can make something that's really simple, but looks just freaking bangerang. That is awesome. Okay, so there's a bunch of stuff going on here, even though this is really simple. One is we have some kind of like smoke or dust elements in the back. We have particles in the background. We have particles kind of flying around the obvious lens flare here. We have the relatively basic logo. And we have the part two text here, which has a little bit of, looks like some kind of distortion or something there. It looks like just some, like a blur that uh, is applied only kind of where some particles are, where there's some kind of texture where it's blurred only in some places. And then I think the other major thing is this right here for this U. This U is kind of filling up with these little particles. This is really cool. Again, not super flashy, crazy, but it's super high end, beautiful looking. And I'm just gonna give this a shot and make something sort of similar for free in Resolve using the Fusion page. Let's do it. So here I have a new project in DaVinci Resolve. I'm just gonna go to the media pool and the edit page, right click and say new Fusion Composition. We'll keep this five seconds and I'll hit create. Double click on the Fusion Composition and that'll open it up in Fusion. By the way, I'm gonna assume that you know a little bit about Fusion if you don't. Check out the nine nodes workshop. Whoops. That will teach you the basic things that you need to understand about what the heck we're doing in Fusion and what are nodes. There's also a link in the description. Super great workshop. It'll teach you the basics for free. Yeah. Ah, tea's really hot. Let's get to work. Let's start with the background. How about a black background? Yay. Let's do that. Everything depends on the background, you see. And we need our logo. And do we just happen to find a font that looks exactly like the Dune font? Okie doke. Download. <laughs> and let's just type D-U-N-E. -E, and we're going to use Dune Rise because that just seems real convenient. We're going to take this text and merge that over our background. I think I'll adjust the tracking a little bit, make this a little bit bigger. And you know what? I'll take a screenshot of this just so we don't have to keep flipping back and forth. And we'll bring that in. And we'll just try and recreate some of this, won't we? That sounds nice. Just that tracking a little bit. You know what? We could even just, just be real, just be real crazy about this. I'm just going to turn this transparency down here. It's going to be our reference. Let's adjust this tracking to be about right. Take the size up a little bit. Take the tracking down. It's not super important that it's exactly the same, but might as well get it close, right? That's pretty good. That's gonna be just fine. Then we need part two, which looks like it's probably a different font. We're just gonna pick a font that's close, all right? Look at that. That's pretty close. That'll totally work for what we're doing. Let's bring that tracking out a little bit. Nobody's gonna know the difference. So really all we've done so far is we have our reference over here on the left, and we have our text one and our text two on the right here. This is uh, part two. This is Dune. And let's change the color of this text. I'm just gonna pick from our reference image. That's just way easy, don't you think? Boom. Now they have this kind of dust stuff in the background and we could make that with an element. I think I'll probably just make this with fast noise. It's probably better to use an element if you have it, but because I'm trying to go a little quick here, we'll just, we'll just use some fast noise and I'll mask the fast noise here. So it's a little bit more intense here at the bottom. I'll soften this a lot. And I'll even make the scale of this fast noise up a little bit, something like that, push up the seethe rate. So now we have this, eh, maybe not quite that much, maybe just a little. We go and let's animate the center too. I can do this a bunch of different ways. What I like to do is just hit equals here and that will let us do a expression. I've got an expression for you. 
and we'll just say time divided by like, uh, I don't know, 300. And we'll hit tab and kind of click out of that. And now we have this kind of moving back and forth. Let's divide it by 500. Take the seethe rate down a little. Yeah, a little bit slower. Take the soft edge up, maybe like 0.4. There we go. It's looking a little better, a little nicer. One thing I'll do on this polygon mask is I'm gonna right click where it says right click here for shape animation. And I'm just gonna remove this polyline. That's going to make it so that this isn't animated and it's just gonna play back a little better. It's gonna to have to think about less. And yeah, we have a little bit of that. So I mean, we can use our own elements for this, but you know, it's gonna work pretty well. And what we could probably do even is take this fast noise and let's just duplicate this. I'm just gonna do kind of the same thing. Control C, Control V like this and put this in here. And this time we're gonna take this mask and just mask it down here on the bottom a little bit. So it's a little bit more intense in the bottom. And I think around the bottom, let's make this kind of this red color. So let's take this fast noise, take this color, and we'll just pick this red. And then behind that, let's pick more of a purple, like this kind of color. Like that, maybe we'll make this one a little bit more intense in the red. So now we have two fast noises on top of each other. And I'm just gonna mess with this seethe, and that's gonna make this noise different than the other noise. So. This noise looks like this. The other noise looks like that. So it's a little bit different. I would even maybe change the scale a little bit on the background. So now we have this very subtle kind of blurry fog that's going past. Oh, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Okay, let's bring up our reference. I'm just hitting one on the keyboard to bring this up on the left. Um, this background is kind of a blue. So instead of black, let's make this sort of this bluish purple. This kind of color will just Grab it from this. That's the nice thing about having a reference. You don't have to design and think this yourself. Uh, you can just make it exactly what it is without having to spend 15 hours deciding whether it's a uh, dark background or something. So yeah, there we go. That's looking pretty sweet. And that's a lot of it, honestly. Let's do this lens flare. We'll just put this to the right of our nodes. And actually I'll go up to workspace and unshow page navigation. Let's label these nodes a little bit just to keep organized, kind of spread them out a bit. I'll hit shift space bar and type UND for underlay. Double click off, hold alt and click the underlay and hit F2. And we'll call this um, fog. There we go. And let's make this some color that's sort of representative. So maybe orange. Then we have our text. Same thing. Move this over to the right a little bit. And now to the right of this, that's going to be in front of our text because we always kind of go from left to right, background to foreground. We're going to work on this lens flare. So there's a bunch of ways you can make a lens flare. You can use a flare element, which is usually looks the best. There's ways to generate lens flares. There is a built in lens flare plugin here for fusion. So we can do that. And let's just see if there's one that's sort of works. Lens flare preset, let's say anamorphic handy cam. Oh, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. We definitely want some kind of anamorphic flare. That's kind of what we've got there. Man, that's pretty good. That 70s sci-fi, the glare color. We're gonna make this, let's see here. Flare spot, orange starburst is white, ghost, ghost. So this ghost is kind of pink. Let's make this more of a yellow. Just kind of keep going through this here until we find anamorphic streak. There we go. That's what we're gonna want. Want this a little bit. A little bit more orange or red. This last Corona Rays, this should be kind of an orange or red too. There we go. And that lens flare is pretty close to what we want. Let's say maybe take the scale down a little bit. We can make this, take this anamorphism up like, eh, maybe not quite that much. Yeah, somewhere in there. In fact, I might even just take this like this. And, and I think what we'll do is maybe just make a background here. We'll run this background through the lens flare, which is just gonna give us this lens flare isolated. And we're gonna go ahead and just take this lens flare and put it on top of the text like this. So we just have a black background running into that lens flare so we have our own kind of element. We'll put this in the middle if we want to, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna move this around. And let's take this merge here where it says alpha gain, we're just gonna turn that down. And that's gonna blend that in. But we want to color correct this before we do that. So we'll just put some, put a color corrector here. And I think we're gonna tint this so that we don't have any of that blue or pink. It's just gonna be the same kind of golden color. And kind of push this towards kind of that orange. That's gonna help a little bit, just make that really orange. And now I can take this whole thing 
and grab a transform and kind of just bring this down and put that here right over our little circle. And we're getting a little bit of these kind of edges for our lens flare, which I'm thinking is from our lens flare kind of adding glare to our shot. So maybe we don't want to do the transform. We could probably fix it this way, but let's just let's just position this lens flare over here ourselves and just use the scaling here. Yes, that's looking a lot better. Let's just go ahead and add another lens flare. Just say copy and paste and then move this down a touch like this. And now we have that double flare. Now it's a little bit blurry. And so we can take this global defocus down a little bit. Just take that down a touch for each of these. It feels nice. Let me move this closer a little bit. Yes, there we have our flare. That's sweet. Maybe we'll add one more flare here. Just say control C, control V. And this time we're just gonna make a default. This time we'll just make it blank. And I'm just gonna add one element. I'm just gonna use the mirror preset and bring this down just so we have a nice little kind of glow like this. We're just gonna put that over, make this really small, just so we have a little bit more glow happening on here. We'll colorize this just a little bit orange. Take this flare color, Move this more towards orange, even more in kind of the red territory. And oh, that's looking pretty sweet. That's looking pretty sweet. I don't know, you can't complain too much about that. That's looking dope. Okay, so let's label these. This is gonna be called a, a flare one for anamorphic flare, a flare two. This will be main glow flare. I don't know, looks good. That's doing some cool stuff. Now this whole thing's making, making everything a little bit warm. I think what I might do is just put a brightness and contrast after this color corrector. And this time I'm gonna clip the black and white and I'm just gonna bring this low down a little bit. And that's just going to make more black in our element that we're making, that we're putting over this. That's just going to kind of clarify it a little bit. So now if we turn this off and on, all we see is the flare showing up there. Oh, it's looking pretty sweet. Now let's add a little bit of dust. We can do this in a bunch of different ways. I think behind our text, but in front of our fog, we could generate some particles. So I can just take this P emitter and a P render. <laughs> take these and merge this over like this. And this emitter, let's go to region and say all. And style, let's go to blob. And size, let's bring up a little bit and bring the variance up a little bit. And now we're gonna have uh, kind of all these speckles. It almost looks like stars, right? But what we're doing is making dust. So we could do something like that. Let's make these all different sizes. Let's make these kind of the same color. There we go. And let's just make a couple every frame or so. What this will do is just start kind of blotching these onto the screen like that. which is fine. Let's actually have these sort of fade in and out. So if we go to style, we go to fade controls, we can bring in these handles and inside of the handles is when this is fully opaque. So we could just have them kind of fade in and out. These sort of just slowly fade on, slowly fade out. That works for me, but let's give a little bit of movement to this. Let's go over to controls, go to velocity, let's push some velocity here. Let's change the angle and have them kind of go up into the left. Now we have these particles sort of going up into the left. And let's vary the velocity just a little bit. I'm just gonna vary it by, I don't know, 0.2 or so. We're going to vary the angle just a little bit so that they're going in a little bit different direction. That already looks pretty good. I'm gonna make these just a little bigger so you can see it on YouTube and stuff. But I'd probably make these pretty small. But yeah, you could see these, right? So they're all kind of fading in like that, okay? And the one thing I'll do is I'm gonna add an effect for our particles. I'm gonna hit shift space bar with our P emitter selected and I'm gonna type T-U-R-B. That's gonna bring up our perturbulence or you can just say turbulence, it's like pterodactyl, turbulence. And now this will kind of move them randomly a little bit more. You know, there's air pressure differences and things like that. And it just makes it a little bit more random. So I like that. Let's only have these show up sort of towards the bottom of the screen. And I'm just gonna do that with a soft mask. I'll just take an ellipse mask and just kind of do one of these things. 
and then just soften the edge so that we mostly see them down towards the bottom. Like that works pretty well. Maybe let them come up just a little more. Sounds good. I'm gonna turn this size down a little bit so it's tasteful. All right, now let's do the, uh, the blur thing. And again, you could probably use a element, like you could bring in a stock footage of particles or you know water drops or whatever. Um, we could probably just do sort of the same thing with our P emitter. I'll just copy and paste this P emitter here. And this time, instead of making them small, we're gonna make these a little bit bigger. So we'll push these up to two again, something like that. Mm, we'll vary them by one. That works. And let's just take the velocity down a little bit. And I think we'll have them kind of float up a little bit. Yeah, like this. Yes, good, good. So now we're gonna take these and we're not even gonna show these particles, but we're going to blur things where these particles are. So I could take a blur, just a regular blur. I'm gonna run everything through this blur. And so if I were to look at my media out here, push up my blur a little bit. You can see it's blurring everything, but we're just gonna blur it a little bit just to where we start to notice it a little bit. But we're only gonna do this where our particles are. So I can take the output of our P render and just plug this into our mask input here. And now check this out. As we look at this. Oh, did you see it? There's a little bit of that distortion there just where those particles are. That's pretty cool. I think we might need a little bit more particles, so I'll push this up to like three. Let's just put a lot of particles in there. This. Now we should really start to see that coming through. Let's take that velocity down to be pretty slow. It's not quite working the way we want. We could turn this emitter, this region, instead of all, we could put this from a line, and we could put the line like right under our, our text like this. And now we should really see this happening as those particles go up, it kind of makes that fuzzy. I feel like we're blurring this a little bit too much, so I'll take the blur down just a touch. We just want a little bit of distortion here on the sides. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. Something like that. Let's maybe take the turbulence off of this because I feel like that's kind of messing with things. Then we'll push up the velocity. There we go. Now we're getting this distortion on those letters. That's exciting. That's maybe a little much. Let's randomly distribute the temporal distribution and take the number down a little bit. Yeah, so now we just have a little bit of that here and there. Yeah, so now we have some of that going on. I think that works pretty well. So depending on how strong you wanna get that, you can kind of mess with that a little bit. The last thing I wanna do is kind of fill up this U. So the U, let's start with a mask. Oh yes, mask that beezy. <laughs> Just gonna use a rectangle mask. It's gonna be the U in Dune. And I'll connect this to the merge. And I'm gonna invert the mask and just kind of put this over this U like this. And then we can kind of cut away from it a little bit. And so we're just gonna start down here a little bit. And then we'll just keyframe the center. I'll just click this keyframe diamond here, move all the way to the end, and we'll have this just fill up that U. So throughout the title, we have it kind of fill up that U. See? See what we're doing? Let's also add some more particles. We'll just copy the same P emitter, P render. Let's put these particles right behind our U, just like that. And for our region, instead of a line, let's just maybe do a sphere. And we'll put the sphere right here about the same size as that U. What do you think? And now as we play this back, we have this kind of shooting out a bunch of particles. Now for the particles, we can make this whatever we want. I think in the trailer, it kind of looks like, I don't know, pieces of glass or flower petals or something like that. It's probably something that makes sense with the story. If you know what they are, let me know. But I'm going to make something that looks sort of like that. And you could switch it out with whatever it is. So um, why don't we just make a particle with our background here? I'm going to make this the same color. But for our image size, let's make this like, I don't know, like 100 by 100. Very, very small image. Uncheck auto resolution, do 100 by 100. Now we have this little image here and we're gonna take a mask and mask it. And let's just kind of make a little flower petal-y shape like this. Looks good. And that's going to be our particle that we use. Just kind of make this as big as makes sense. Okay. 
And from here, we could just like group this. I can just hit Control G and we'll call this uh, flower petal. And for our emitter here, instead of style blob, let's say style bitmap, that's gonna give us a yellow input. And we could just take this flower petal, pajamas, put that in there. And for our size, let's do like 0.1, maybe even smaller than that, oh boy. Take the size variance down. We're just gonna do it like pretty small, okay? And here in the trailer, it looks like they get bigger over time. So let's size over life. Let's start them small and then big like that. Oh, look at that. It's already kind of working. Just like, <laughs> we only want a couple. So let's do like 0.2 per frame. So now as we play this back, it's kind of pushing out those pedals. We're going to vary the velocity a little bit. That's going to make this a little bit more natural looking. I'm going to take the velocity down. Let's vary it just a little like that. So now we have these pedals kind of flying off. Great. Let's vary the angle Z by 360 degrees. And let's go to rotation and let's adjust the Z variance by 360 degrees. So that'll make sure that they all start at different rotations. And then spin is actually how they animate. So let's just say Z variance and push that up a little bit. That's gonna change how fast these rotate. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Something like that. Now, do these fade out in the trailer here? Doesn't really look like it. It's not on for very long. So we won't have them fade out. Let's go to style, fade, and let's just keep them on the whole time. So now we just push those up. Just kind of keep trucking. The life for that, we need those to be at least 119. Let's just say 200 just to be safe. Now we have this kind of, yes, it's working. The one thing maybe we'll do is take this angle variance down a little bit and angle this just a little bit to the left. Yeah, there we go. It's pretty much working. Take the velocity down just a touch. That's most of things with particles is just testing things and moving it back and forth. Yes, there we go. Great. The one thing that we should do is fade this rectangle a little bit, take the soft edge on that, and that'll help. And at the very end, just make sure this goes up enough to where it's not fading anymore. The other thing is this emitter, under style, under color, we're kind of colorizing this more than we should. We can just double click on that to turn it back to white and that'll make sure that we're actually using the color of the particle. And there we go. I think this is pretty, pretty freaking sweet, man. I think that's pretty freaking sweet. So some of this kind of comes into focus. There are some other subtle things here, but you get the idea. It's pretty much there. This text we're going to kind of blur in, especially the part two. Let's just put a blur on that text. And, you know, over 30 frames or so, we'll take this blur size down. But we're going to start with it blurred in pretty hard, like this. So it's just going to animate in like that. Great. And we're also going to animate the merge blend. So we're going to start, you know, at frame 20 or so, we'll have that fully on. But at frame 0, we'll have it off. So it'll kind of fade in like that. And this whole thing sort of fades into focus too. Let's again just grab another blur. And we're gonna take this whole thing and like by frame 30, we'll have the blur all the way off, but then we'll have it on a little bit at the beginning. So now it just kind of fades in like that. Oh, so cool. We also have some subtle movement here where everything kind of zooms in. And so let's just take this transform. We're just gonna do a basic kind of transform thing here. So we'll just keyframe the size and then we'll bring up the size a little bit as we go, just like that. And now we have a very similar looking thing. Pretty cool. Thing I might adjust is we adjust the scale of our fog just so we can see it a little better. There we go. Yeah. Now we can see that dust and fog just a little nicer. Maybe we'll turn down those particles a little bit just take the blend down on these extra particles. 
Yeah, it's looking sweet. Only other thing I might do is for our flares, I can kind of animate that brightness a little bit. And I can use a modifier for this. We'll take this global brightness, right click and say modify with, and let's just modify with perturb. And what that'll do is just kind of wiggle this back and forth. So as we look at this, we can see how fast, let's push up the speed a little bit. So it's kind of wobbling it a little bit. Take that up just a touch. And let's also put a different wobble on the other flare, global brightness, modify with perturb. This is probably a little strong. Just reset that. So yeah, this is looking pretty sweet. So what a cool motion graphic. Hey, I hope that you had fun here. If you don't know me, my name is Casey and I teach Fusion and I love making things in Fusion. I wanna help you make things in Fusion. And if you're new to this and you're like, gosh, I don't even know what most of that stuff you did is, we have a lot of resources here on this channel. A great place to start is the nine nodes that you need to make almost anything in Fusion. There you go. That is a workshop that's available for free. You could also check out this video for a Fusion Crash Course, okay? Hey, thanks for being here. And I hope that you have a great time making this Dune title. You, you friend, you just friendly friend. <laughs> I don't know.